Atlanta Canada Learning Academy live here in my kitchen. And we've got a little bit of added technology. Tell me if there's any extra weird noises coming through on it. Look at that. It wouldn't be a past episode if we didn't bring in a little KD. <laughs> so um, I'm here with mom. Hey, hey. Yep. And we're really excited about past a week this week and some of the unique things that we've got pulled <laughs> together because, um, and it's week 26, which is super exciting. That means it's been a half a year. Can you imagine? That's a really long time. And we are so excited about planning the next 26 and plus weeks. And I can tell you that seafood's gonna be in our future. I know Lynn and our design team at Cyber PR Army, which we're extremely thankful for, and have been along with us all the way. I've got some really more great graphics and exciting things to get everybody excited about the food that we're gonna be continuing. And um, lobster is gonna be a feature next week and maybe a little bit more, it tends to be popular this time of year. But so is maple. So maple is definitely one of those other neat products right now because it's maple season. So into February and into March, there's a lot going on in Atlantic Canada that is going to be very much featured around those products. So as usual, we'll be ensuring that we incorporate those into our dishes. So let's look at the menu. So we're going to move over there. You can say hi to Mr. Bacon along the way. See if we can do this. Can everybody see that okay? Yep. There we go. So what's gonna happen today? Man, you get to see my beautiful smiling mom. Well, I'm doing it. So um, Atlanta Canada Language Academy and came out just January 31st. I'm really excited about that. I want to call Briggs Maple, Urban Joy, uh, Friday Farm Fresh, again, have been along with us all the way through. And I'm gonna do a clubhouse pasta today. And I'm, and I'm taking a little bit of an influence off of our sandwich last week. Mom and I did some experimenting, so we're going to share that with you live. And of course, making spaghetti and meatballs and pasta and meatballs just seems appropriate on a pasta day. So I've got a great meatball recipe prepared to show everybody. And then Roz is going to bring us a pasta bungle, which is made generally with clams and with knuckles, but we've got a pretty funny story about that. And uh, the beautiful Jacqueline from Vietnam is going to bring us a Quang noodle bowl, which we've seen some pictures of, and I'm very excited to learn that recipe. And Rico Fuzili, which used to be a Fuzili Jerry, which uh, Richard's renamed. He's making a pasta salad with special guest Maureen. Hopefully she'll be able to get logged in. So there we go. You can see our pasta are ready to roll. And let's talk about some ingredients. How's that sound? <laughs> it's actually, it's actually um, Fusili and Richard. Uh, Rico is is not Italian. I looked it up. I thought it would, might be. And Ricardo oh. is more of the Spanish. So okay. it's actually Richard. They just say it with an accent. So Fusili and Richard. <laughs> well, we're excited about you going to be making that. So let's look at a few of the ingredients because we're going to get our pasta started and rolling. Because, um, and if you remember from last week, so if we're going to look down here, we had that amazing uh, clubhouse sandwich. So your general ingredients, so we froze some of the chicken that we had done, and that was the maple mustard marinated chicken. So this is now here. So I've chopped that all up nice and, and, and just in bite-sized pieces. We also made sure that we're making this so that it's enough for two portions. So mom and I are pretty excited about eating it. So the other thing that always goes into a traditional is tomatoes. But this time I'm gonna use a baby tomato and we're gonna show you why because of how we're gonna use those cooked in the recipe. And instead of lettuce, we've got spinach here. So really, really, really great done up in the spinach. And then for noodles, ramen. So um, I think everybody that follows along knows that I eat gluten-free. And I found these really, really great packages of ramen noodles that are ready in three minutes, mom. Yeah. So we've got the water boiled. So those will be ready in no time. And to be able to just pull this recipe together, but they come in two little squares and I'm sure people see different types of these, but this is a traditional ground rice ramen. So I was really excited to discover those. And um, the other ingredients is normally it would be a ham. But I don't know if you remember last week, I substituted out 
that salami because it's just got a nice Italian flair to it. And then of course, bacon to finish it off because as we talk, we all love bacon. So we're gonna be putting all of this together in the pan. And then what I'm gonna be doing is incorporating the ingredients to make, which would be in the sandwich, which is gonna be mayonnaise. And I'm gonna use a grainy mustard because first of all, it gives a really great flavor. And because this is gonna be in a pasta, it's gonna make real, it's gonna look nice in the pasta, but it's gonna give a little bit of an extra bite in there. And then for the liquid, which when we mix it all into the pan, I'm just gonna use a little bit of chicken stock. And of course, there's gonna be a little bit of liquid that's gonna come out of the ramen after we cook it. And that's what's gonna combine it all together. So it's got a real traditional flavor of what a clubhouse sandwich would be. So we're gonna get mom uh, on the pans over here and get a few things going. So we're gonna get all these ingredients put in. And one of the things that I wanna say is the order that you do it is, is important. So because I'm using most ingredients that are already prepared and cooked, we wanna make sure that your certain ingredients you want in the pan in the certain order. So I'm going to, is the pan hot for you? Yeah. So okay. I'm gonna try to be a woven cook over here. So what, that's, we put the noodles in. So one of the first things that we're gonna put in the pan is we're gonna put those tomatoes. So they're gonna start sizzling. And then over here, we're gonna draw two robins in. Mom's grabbing the other one. So we're gonna get those really sizzling. And in another minute, we're gonna put the spinach in and the salami, because we want it to cook a little bit. Okay, so the rest of it is, as soon as it is literally ready, the, the noodles, we're gonna put the noodles with the chicken in together and it's only gonna take about two minutes to warm through. Good morning, Terry. So what we wanna say, and I don't know if you remember one of our favorite ingredients, the bacon. I'm gonna crumble the bacon on top and put it on black because I want the bacon to keep a little crunch. And if I stir it into the pasta with the sauce and everything, it doesn't necessarily maintain the crunch as much. So what I wanna say, sometimes when you're making a pasta in this method and you're using pre-cooked ingredients and you're just warming a few, what becomes really important is putting them in in the right order and it really will enhance that flavor. But regardless, if you throw it all in the pan, it will, I promise you, it will taste excellent as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this down because I'm gonna mix up our dressing. And I'm certainly not gonna be able to do this with two hands. And we've got the chef behind me. Now we're making it well. Tomatoes are going. And we're gonna bring her over these other ingredients and I'm gonna mix this up some of this rice. So I'm gonna put this down. And here's what's gonna go in. I use a typical mayonnaise. This particular one is Hellman's with olive oil in it. And I know that I'm making enough that's gonna go in for mom and I for this ingredient. So the amount of mayonnaise that I put in here is probably about a quarter of a cup. Now, I just wanna be careful because it's, it's very full, it's grainy mustard. Smells delicious. We need to get a hookup. Lynn, there's a great technology. We can get a smell-o-vision thing going on, right? So this is fairly strong. So in this one, I'm gonna use about a tablespoon. I'm gonna set that down. And I do want this to have a little bit of a tang and a little bit of a sweetness to it. So I am gonna cut that with, of course, David would be so proud. Little bit of maple syrup. And all that's going to do, and I put about a tablespoon, is it's going to cut down a little bit of the acid from that mustard, but it's still going to make sure that you don't really taste the maple, but the maple allows it to cut that acid a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and put the salt and pepper a little bit right in my mixture that I'm making here. And then the one other ingredient that I've got to get, Mom, I think it's right behind. Did you pass me the 
I don't know. The chicken broth. Look, she couldn't read my mind. Could you pass me the? And I didn't finish that sentence. So, chicken stock. So I'm going to put a little bit in now so that it thins it out this a bit. And obviously I can't tip it over, but I put about a half a cup of chicken stock. And what that has given me, just enough of a creaminess. And once all those vegetables are cooked up together, that's the sauce. And it really is that easy. So depending on the type of mustard or different pieces, you could use any different type of a Dijon, regular mustard, whatever you like. It's what's gonna give us the creaminess in the sauce. So what I will tell you, and you're gonna see this particular is, it's not a heavy cream because we're not using any of those heavy ingredients. And then the other thing is, is because Parmesan is one of those cheese I can have a bit of, we'll make sure we chop it off with some beautiful fresh grated Parmesan cheese. So how are we making out there, mom? Everything's in. So let's have a look at what's going on in the pan. Michelle's iPhone here, roving. So here's the sauce. It's gonna go in. And how pretty does that look? Really pretty. So there we go. And at this stage of the game, the noodles are done. So mom's gonna drain the noodles and we're gonna stir those in with the sauce. And we're gonna show you what that looks like. So pretty much at that spot, it only needs to simmer for about a minute because the only other thing we need to cook through is the chicken. Which I just added to the pan. And I'm gonna tell you, it looks absolutely beautiful. So she's gonna stir the chicken and the sauce together. And while she's doing that, we're gonna to get to eat some of this while you're cooking on it. All right, she's combining that together. I did cut up some beautiful fresh green onion. You can't see it quite as well in my nice bowl from the Amalfi Coast in Italy. But uh, we've got just enough a finely chopped fresh green onion to make that recipe just that little extra freshness at the end. So, any questions so far? So, for those Canadians that are on that have had. I have, a, I have a question, Michelle. Where did you get those noodles in the Atlantic region? Those are from Costco. Oh, okay, perfect, thank you. So they Excellent. have them in a big box like this. It has Excellent. quite a few in them. Perfect. Please. I'm so looking for really, really great. And, 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 and anybody from here, and I think there's Costco's and bigger stores in and around the world as well. It's a great store to be able to go and get a lot of these out. So what I also wanted to ask is, can you see for those of us who have had a clubhouse sandwich, how the ingredients in this pasta dish are exactly what you would have in the sandwich, but instead of the bread, we're putting the noodles in place of it. And you could use a spaghetti, you could use anything that you want. Okay, I'm getting a whoa come look from mom behind me. So let's see if I can unlock her phone and bring this over. So we're gonna, and, and, and notice that it says Michelle's iPhone on and mom's phone, right? All right, everybody. What do you think? I am so gonna make that recipe, it looks delicious. And, and, it, and it is, and you know what, Roz? It's done and ready to eat right now. Mm -hmm. Hey, mom's gonna put that in the bowl. We're gonna chop it with those beautiful onions and it's ready to roll. Mm -hmm. It really does make a big difference in, in, in that piece. So we are going to enjoy that. So I'm going to um, show this on the plate and in, I'm gonna maybe roll over to you, Roz, and I'm gonna come back and show my meatballs shortly. But mom, can you grab a dish and throw a little bit on that plate? The one thing that I do want to say with a recipe like this, it is one that I recommend that you eat right away. 
It's not one that sits as well later. And I think it's just due to the textures that's in it. The other thing that I would put in it is just a little, we put it in the bottom of the pan. And I hadn't said that is a decent amount of good olive oil. And what the olive oil does is it coats everything at the beginning. And look at that. So there we go. Bravo, fantastic. So I can tell you, I'm gonna be very excited about this and enjoying a few bites of this as well. We throw this over to look at uh, what's cooked in, in your kitchen. Excellent, thanks Michelle. So as Michelle said, I'm going to be doing a seafood dish, which is I'm going to be using whole baby clams and mussels. So mussels are available in the Atlantic region year round and they're very popular. Ross, can you move your phone? You've got volume on both your devices. Okay, Michelle, you're gonna have to chat for a second while I figure that out. Are you hearing too, everybody with Roz on that? Just somebody, no? Go ahead, Roz. Just How's try that? going ahead so we can see. How's that? Do you hear two of me? No, nope. perfect. I'm gonna, gonna continue on then. Excellent. So Lynn says it sounds good to her. So off we go. So with mussels, although they're very fresh and lovely, they need to be scrubbed if you're gonna cook with them. Um, if you're just steaming them for mussels, uh, you don't really, you just need to rinse them. But with this dish, I'm gonna actually use the juice from the mussels is part of the dish. So what I did was I pre-cleaned the mussels. These are available all through the region. They're grown year round and they're cultivated mussels. Now keep in mind that, let's see if I have any, I discarded any ones that are, are open. If they're open, they're not ready to eat. I had one that opened, but I tapped it. And the way you can tell if it's still alive is you tap it and it closes. If it does not close, it's not good to eat. So that's a very key point because we don't want to make anyone sick. And this one's so tight that there's a piece of a muscle in there. You can see the little tip. Where's my camera? So it's so tight that I can't even get it out. So what I'm going to do is now that my muscles are cleaned, I am going to put them in a, the pot. And let me just turn my camera on here. There we go. So I have, whoops, reverse that thought. Mm. So I have a pot, let me just reverse it. I don't know how to do that. So I'm just gonna do it this way. So I have a pot and in that pot, I'm going to turn it on high. I'm going to add, um, I'm going to add a half a cup of wine and a full cup of water. And I put a little bit of fish sauce in the water, just to give that a little extra flavor. It does not call for it, but you know what? I like fish sauce and I know Jacqueline does as well. So you can hear the wine sizzle and the water. So now that the wine and the water is there, I'm going to add my mussels and put the lid on. So once they're steamed, probably about five minutes, and I'll continue on with the rest of the pasta. So I shall show you. So the, all that's in there is the mussels, and they're starting to sizzle. You can see them and a little bit of wine. So I stir that so that the wine is coated all through the muscles. And I give it a quick stir just to make sure that it's great flavor. So you can see that I stir it up the duck. And then I add the lid to make sure that they steam properly. 
So once that's cooking, what I do then is I'm gonna add to a frying pan, I'm going to add um, some olive oil, about five tablespoons. So I will add five tablespoons to my olive oil. One, two, three, four, five. That's about, that's about five. And I'm gonna turn that on as well onto a medium, medium, so that the garlic does not, does not uh, brown. You really don't want brown garlic because then, then it, what it does is it ends up being, uh, the flavor does not go through as well. So I'm gonna move this over. And this is the size garlic that I used. So I used a fairly large clove and I used two of those because I like garlic and it's, it's, it's the main ingredient in, into the flavor of the, of the pasta. I'm also gonna add, um, let me just turn this off for a second. I'm also gonna add Russian tarragon. It calls for tarragon, but I only had Russian tarragon because I grew this in my garden this year. So, and it kind of does the same flavor, but it's, uh, I prefer Russian tarragon over French tarragon. And I know it's an Italian dish, but you know what? All countries go well together, right? So. Um, also, so I have, a, and I didn't use as much because I'm not sure what the flavor is going to be versus the French tarragon. So I, I crushed it up. I used about a tablespoon. And then I have a tablespoon of my fresh parsley, which I'll show you. My fresh parsley is still growing quite nicely out of my greenhouse. Can you see it? Uh, sorry, in my sunroom. So that's still growing well within my sunroom. So you can grow herbs year round in Canada, believe it or not, even though we're very stormy and snowy at times, but it's, uh, it's still doable if you have a lot of sunlight. So uh, with that, so we're gonna put the garlic in the frying pan now that the uh, olive oil is starting to heat up. I'm going to add the garlic and there we go. Add the garlic. Need to turn it up a little bit. As the garlic starts to simmer, of course, we'll get a great smell in the kitchen, which is fantastic. Um, and then once we do this, we're going to check on the mussels. Let's uh, check and see how they're doing. Oh, look, see, they're already starting to steam and they're already opened up, as you can see. Whoa, I my whole pan. So they are pretty much ready. So with that, I'm going to whoo, a little foggy over there. Can you tell? <laughs> so now that now that I've steamed the mussels, I have to take them out of the shells, and I use the juice from the mussels, the wine, the water, and then what I do is I simmer that down in a frying pan until. Um, it's about half. So that is my sauce for the, for the, uh, for the, uh, the pasta. So I'm going to send it back to you, Michelle, because at this point I need about five or six minutes and I don't think it's going to do well if you guys watch me for that long. So if you're going to slide it back to you and then we'll come back, I'll show you what happens after this. I can have completely, well, that was great. And I can so completely appreciate there are certain kinds of things. I said to mom, she's doing amazing. Because navigating that with one person is one thing, and then her using the two pieces of technology is pretty cool. So kudos, props to you, Roz. So what you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about just pasta. And can you give me that bowl behind that laptop there, Mom? We. So I would be remiss. In, oh, good stuff. Did you see that? It's hard, but we're not going to. We we'll have to make sure you show that after with the keep it open one. I don't know who is familiar with. Jacqueline, have you heard of Kraft Dinner? Never? Okay. So you're telling me your son in Toronto has never spoken to you of this item. I, right, Lynn, I am all in and I'll add five more exclamation marks on Lynn's what? Okay, so take a screenshot of that and you need to have a discussion with them and report back to us next week. I would bet you he has had this. So for the Canadians out of here, we couldn't do a pasta episode and not honor craft dinner. 
which just for the record comes in a box in the grocery store. We try to get it on sale around a dollar a box. It could be two people, most university students would eat a whole box on their own. And all you do is boil the pasta and then you add this little packet of yellow orange cheese sauce and mix it up and you have lunch. And it's the original craft dinner. And in Canada, you will hear called Katie. And your younger boys will be coming home from school going, can I have KD? So I, that we'll, we'll make you that promise, but we'll have to stay tuned for how long it is. So uh, we just wanted to pay a fun homage to this, albeit I can't have anything that's in it. Um, every once in a while, I will cook a gluten-free pasta and put some of the sauce on it, just because I can. So on the back of this box, and we don't know what happened to Richard. So I think he had a technology issue. It's his gift. One night, him and I were talking, and I said, there, when you get to Canada, that box of Katie is going to him. So there's a fun piece. So, and Roz, you let me know when you're ready. We're gonna go through a couple quick things. The shapes, Rotini, that's the one with the little squiggles. So, you know, uh, I think the Zili can look like that as well. Fettuccine, which is just a flat spaghetti that got run over. <laughs> and someone ran it over. And, and you know the differences, and I spent a ton of time, and I did some cooking lessons when I was in Italy. And the funny thing is about Italians, they will speak positively of boxed and fresh pasta both, depending on what recipe that you're cooking. But it really is about what you, you it doesn't change the flavor of the recipe often. It's just that certain sauces stick better to other ones. And did you just see you found a gluten-free on Katie's style? Yes, Annie's. I have had Annie's. Um, I must say, it's close. Um, but the other thing is, is, you know, lasagna noodles. So lasagna is always a great noodle. These particular ones come in a short box. What I like about it is I can make lasagnas all different sizes with this type of a size noodle. Um, and then these ones are from Italy. And you'll see that the big shells, those ones are a, a rigatoni. And anybody in Italy will tell you, anything with like a bolognese or a meat sauce, they like the rigatoni because the things get stuck in the middle. So you get really good bites. So that's a little bit of fun when you look at think, um, the know, different types of pastas. Michelle, can I add a quick note as Please. we speak? So this is a, the nice thing about a mussel is that the shell turns into a tool. So what you do is you grab one that you've already taken out and you grab the mussel out and you put it in the bowl. So that way you don't get your hands all dirty. You just grab the mussel, put it in the bowl. So I just wanted to add that little technique. Uh, some people use a fork, some people use their fingers. It, it's okay to do anything, but I always use the mussel shell as the tool to grab the muscle of the shell. So back to you, Michelle. Oh, fantastic, Roz. And if you're ready to keep going, you can. I'm, I'm, I've got um, lots I have to strain. I have to strain the uh, the juice, and then I'll put it in the pan, and I'll, I'll start fantastic. up. Fantastic, fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble. I'm going to assemble my meatballs here. So, okay. um, final notes on pasta macaroni and then Jacqueline you're going to use a different noodle today maybe maybe do you have a couple comments on the types of pasta or noodles that are available in Vietnam um, in Vietnam people often uh, use uh, rice uh, to make uh, noodles but uh, uh, pasta uh, they use uh, wheat right with wheat, wheat flour to make it yeah there is a difference between noodles from Vietnam and uh, pasta in Western countries. Yeah, and, and you know what? I prefer your noodles, so that's a good thing. <laughs> it's been very wonderful to have the, more of the influence in, in North America because we now have those the, the ramen and there's a lot of other packaged with beautiful uh, rice vermicelli and not expensive here, that it's very quite available. And um, I do highly recommend it. And a lot of people that are converters, kitchens over 
often say, you know, it would ask mom, well, or what are you missing on the pasta? And there's all of those pastas I just showed you are made gluten-free. So you don't have to miss anything. But to your point, Jacqueline, I love finding this ramen noodle that was made and all their proper ones. So then, you know, and what I like about the ramen, and that's why I often use it, and I'm excited about your dish. So I know I'm going to share my meatball, and then we're going to move over to you in just a minute. But I love how, um, especially in Vietnam, you use the ramen as such a main part of a dish differently. And, and I'm excited to see yours because we don't do as much of that here. Now, if we go to a Vietnamese or a Chinese restaurant, we might see that, but it's not as common that we do at home. So we love your recipes because then we can share them a bit. So I'm gonna finish off what my meatball is and what went in it. And I think it's gonna arrive just in right around a time. And then mom and I are gonna cook a couple. It smells amazing. So this meatball recipe, and I just put it all in here. And one of the things when I make a meatball is I try to use two or three different types of meat. Why? It gives great texture, gives unbelievable flavor. And generally anybody eats them and goes, wow, it's just a little different. And because there's different fat content in different meat. So in this particular one, we chose um, and it's almost equal amounts. So in the, I'm gonna tell you in this particular recipe, a little less on the sausage. So there's ground pork, ground beef. And then I took um, three mild Italian sausages that we got from the local butcher and I just took them out of the casings. So I just put the ground meat in it. Because they're mild Italian seasoning already flavored, that mixed in with the other meat just really gives. And of course the sausage is a little fattier, right? And I used a really lean pork and a really lean beef. So what it really does is it gives a nice blend in there. So one of my favorite seasonings, we've talked about this before, and that's that just that Italian blend and Angela from Urban Joy makes it. So the other thing I'm gonna put in there is probably about a tablespoon of that. And I put some other seasoning in there already, but of course, everybody knows me well, what did I put in? Fresh thyme, <laughs> and right, there's two eggs that have already been put into that as well to give it a good mixture. It also allows it to hold together. So some alternatives, I sometimes will put a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese in through the whole meatball mixture and it does give a nice extra bite. So I put a little bit of grated Parmesan in there. So those are ready to go. So, oh, and actually a minute ago, I sprinkled some fresh green onions. That was not originally in the recipe, but it's in the recipe now. So it's really about fresh ingredients you'll see in this. I didn't use uh, any other really mixed things. Obviously a little bit of fresh salt and pepper in there. So we kept it clean because the three meats have really nice flavor, as does that, the Italian seasoning that we put in there. But I do encourage you, it's a meatball. You can season it any way you want. And it's, so if you wanna put a little bit of cumin and turmeric or have them taste one way or another, it really doesn't matter. But um, we're gonna stick with a little bit of an Italian flair here. So we're gonna get those up. Roz, ready to go over to you? To wrap up, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> And it's a technical time of day. Jack, there, there we go. There we go. Yeah, your presents are wet and they wouldn't let me use my mouse. <laughs> Difficulty. But I'm still simmering down because it takes about five to eight minutes. But in the meantime, we can have a chat about something else. So in the, so I uh, have the, uh, our, the frying pan ready. So that is going to be where my olive oil and my garlic is. And got to get all that olive oil out of there. So I need a spatula. Can't leave any behind because it's too delicious. So as that is simmering, we're going to garlic. As you can see in here, it's frying up. 
Make sure it does not brown. So remind me every now and then to go stir that because you know what? It only takes seconds. Roz, you know what? Roz, in, in the spirit of time too, because we still get Jacqueline and Richard's recipes yeah. to get through. Go do for you it. Want to, do you want to have Jacqueline go ahead yeah. and then you wrap up right after yes, her? please. Why don't we do that? Jacqueline, let's throw this over to you while Roz... Uh, we don't want to burn that garlic and we've all been where she is. So she's in a dangerously location and I can smell it from here. So Jacqueline, are you ready to roll yes. over? Yes. And, and so it's your yeah. bowl? Good. Um, and you let. You should have your screen share uh, ready. Yeah. No. Yep, not yet. Oh, okay. How's that? Looking forward. Rose, I'm very happy that uh, today you use uh, fish sauce for uh, the, the dish. All right. Okay, do you see uh, my PowerPoint? Do you see the pictures? Yeah. Uh, Mì quảng, in English you say quảng noodles, and quảng is the, the, the proper name huh? of uh, an area in central of Vietnam, central Vietnam. And um, uh, I remember Rose uh, told me that she uh, went to Hội An, central Vietnam. And uh, I, I uh, did you did you try mì quảng in Hội An? Yes, okay. It is the speciality. It's in, delicious. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It is the speciality of um, uh, Central Vietnam. But uh, there's a variety of recipes. Um, people can make mì quảng with pork, as I, uh, I did. And uh, people can make mì quảng with chicken, uh, beef, uh, streams and uh, I choose this one because uh, it is the simplest recipe. Now, uh, first, I'd like to tell you about the ingredients for the broth. Uh, as you can see here, I used pork, uh, about uh, nearly two pounds, 600 grams, uh, garlic, yeah. Uh, I use a lot of garlic, uh, two tablespoons to uh, season the pork and uh, tomato sauce. Uh, for this dish, uh, I didn't use uh, chicken broth. Instead of chicken broth, I use coconut milk. Um, coconut is sweet, so we use less uh, sugar and coconut milk can make um, pork um, softer quickly. And uh, for spices, uh, I use one tablespoon of fish sauce, one tablespoon of seasoning powder, um, one tablespoon of sugar, and half tablespoon of salt. And this is Anito oil. Okay, I have a, a picture here to illustrate anito oil. Um, we use anito oil to make um, the, the, the noodle a little bit uh, red. I mean, the color, uh, it is uh, more colorful when we use anito oil. And uh, for noodles, we have to have uh, a lot of fresh vegetables. And the special thing for this kind of noodles is uh, baby fresh mustard greens. We need to have this kind of vegetables. And another thing, as you can see here, banana blossom. Okay, I have a picture here to illustrate what it is. The special thing for this kind of noodles. And uh, rice crackers roasted peanuts. Um, 
the 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 noodles is yellow because people use uh, turmeric to color the noodles. And now the instructions. Uh, first, you have to season the pork with tomato sauce, minced garlic, fish sauce, salt, seasoning powder, black pepper, and a little uh, oil. And um, we have to mix it well and set aside for about 30 minutes. And, and then we have to heat the cooking oil and a little oil. Then we add minced garlic, fry till fragrant. Then we add the pork and saute for five minutes. After that, we add coconut milk and then we add tomato sauce. I use two uh, tablespoons of tomato sauce. And then we cook about uh, 25 minutes or until the pork becomes soft. And then you adjust the broth to your taste. Um, remember, the broth should be saltier than the soup, but less salty than the sauce. And unlike pho, we use a lot less broth for each bowl of mì quang. And for noodles, uh, actually, the, the noodle is boiled. I just boil the noodles for 30 seconds to, uh, um, to make them uh, a little bit hot. And uh, we filled a serving bowl with noodles and fresh greens, uh, topped with some meat and uh, laid on with broth over. We uh, garnish with some rice crackers and roasted peanuts. And finally, we mix well with chopsticks and spoon before serving. We enjoy. Thank you for watching. Do you have any questions? I have a question, Jacqueline. If, when are you going to make that when you arrive? <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure. I love yeah, to. <laughs> I yes. went to unmute myself, but I think I accidentally asked you to mute yourself. So that was a little bit of a bobo. I'm yes. also trying to get some okay. of my <laughs> I really like your tips, and I do have a question. You spoke about that red, to give it the red. Thank you for adding that you were answering the questions that were in my head as they were coming out but what flavor is it is it a, a spice um hot flavor mm -hmm. or what does okay. it okay because my children uh my children um, can't eat um, mm -hmm. red chilies so mm -hmm. i didn't add uh, red chilies but actually right. for this kind of uh, noodles uh, we need to mm -hmm. add uh some red chilies a little bit hotter it's much better. Yeah. Okay, so you found a good alternative. That's really good. Lynn, I think we're going to get some good allergy tips over there on that one. That's a really neat alternative on, you know, and the same thing people don't realize about turmeric gives the natural taste for the mm. coloring. So, Raza, are you ready to wrap up your piece so Richard can show us his Most recipe? Most definitely I am. Let me grab my other camera. I'll try not to steam it up so much this time, but, uh, you know, can't promise everything. Rod, so we, yeah, so you're ready to wrap up the recipe and show yep, us what you have? Ready to Great. Go. So All right. I've added the mussel juice and the wine and the water to the olive oil and the garlic, and you can see it's simmering. And now I add just a touch of, just a touch of salt and pepper. So here we go. I like pepper, so I'm gonna add a, maybe a little touch more. And then there's a little stab of salt will do you. And then you add your mussels and your clams that I had showed you earlier. Uh, there we are. And we simmer it for a couple of minutes. 
while you would be cooking your pasta. You don't put it on medium right now, but eventually it will go down to simmer. So this will simmer for about uh, maybe about six to eight minutes, and then or you know to the. But I'm using. I shall show you what I'm using. Um, there we go. I'm using fresh pasta, so I'm using little egg nets. So I'm going to take it out of the package. Actually, it'd be a little easier to look at. So I, these only take a minute to cook, and then I'm going to serve it. I'm going to serve it this evening with my friend Miss Beverly, and we're going to cook two pieces, and we're going to put that in the in the pan and heat it up and stir it all together. But the sauce is going to simmer for about another five minutes, maybe you know a little less, uh, and just to get the flavor all the way through. And then I'll cook this this evening and serve it that way. Of course, I'm going to add some fresh parsley from my little tree here. And I just want to sh sell, show you a super thing. When I owned the dinner theater, we used to sell mussels. So I always brought my children to the dinner theater. And we used to make cell phones. <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's the shell. All the shells are all put together. And my kids called it a shell phone. So that's uh, my shell phone for my dinner theater days. Back to you, Michelle. I love it. That is fantastic, Roz. We'll look forward to seeing those pictures later and a great way to show how you can package and travel with that meal. So I really love that. So Richard, Ricardo's pasta salad. Tell us what you have for us. I'm very excited to hear your ingredients. Okay. How you doing, everybody? <laughs> so sorry about that thing earlier. I had a bit of a tech problem with a with a SIM card data plan. But anyway, um, we got that sorted out. Today I'm making uh, fusilli riccio. Um, so I'm saying that with an Italian accent. Whenever I whenever I cook pasta, I like to put on the music, and uh, something happens to my voice, and it becomes more Italian. So there we go. <laughs> So first we have the fusilli. Um, I have used both two types of fusilli. This is the whole wheat of fusilli and the white of fusilli. I like to mix them together. And I've already cooked these things together here, al dente. And it's just to the perfect point that I don't even need to strain. The water has just gone out. So I kept them that warm. This is a warm pasta salad. So. Next is the salsa. Now the sauce, I'm gonna make using a number of ingredients. One ingredient is the sun dried tomatoes. The sun dried tomatoes. And for the pasta also, I have added just a slight little bit of chili sauce. Chili, yeah, extra virgin oil, olive oil, chili peppers. So that's the olive oil that I've used in the pasta. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that in here, just for the flavor. <laughs> and this is uh, just about all ready to go. So the, the other ingredients, I'm going to have the lemons. I've got the fresh lemons, and I'm going to squeeze them to the point of the seeds coming out. And then I take the seeds and I put them in the vineyard, the family vineyard. Not all Italians have a, you know, that kind of family. This is a different kind of family. <laughs> Squeeze, and I'm doing this in the wok. <clears throat> then I have the fresh tomatoes as well. Already chopped. <laughs> They're going to go in here now. Then I'm going to add the olives. Here we have the green olives. And I'll tell you something, I was once in uh, driving around, I was once driving around Tuscany with a pair of lovely ladies I met on a cruise ship. And uh, we see a huge vista of olives. And we pull over the car and we take the pictures. And I think to myself, this is an olive orchard. I I'm just gonna grab one off of the tree and eat it. Don't ever do that. <laughs> It's not meant to be eaten fresh. Yes. It's not like an apple. <laughs> Definitely not, Richard. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, was had, I had, yeah. Uh, 
Give me a second. What's that, Michelle? Had a similar experience, but was highly also told that that was it. But they were growing in the backyard at the villa we were staying in. Yep. As were the lemons, as was everything everywhere. And of course, I went out and I, it, it, well, out of curiosity, of course, I had to try it. <laughs> but yeah, no, you don't ever want to eat an well, olive oil. Well, don't ever do that. Yeah. Uh, you'll still be tasting yeah. it two days later. <laughs> Keep going. Show us what you're cooking, Richard. And I went out to buy uh, the basil, the fresh basil, but there seemed to be no basil for sale. So I went uh, for, for parsley. This is what I'm also adding into the salad. So it's all going to be a little bit warm. And I also have the basil spice. Anyway, I have this basil spice. So I add a little bit of this. So this is the sauce. This is the dressing. But I'm going to mix it all up together at the end. It's a warm Italian salad. And finally, we got the last ingredient, which is the Chianti. Now, this is a, this is a wine opener from the 1970s. So it still works. Not like the one you bought three months ago or three years ago. <laughs> and the rule that you're going to follow here is quite simple. It's, it's the rule of the one, the one and the two and the three. It's the one, two, three rule. So you put the one in here and then the two and three in here. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> now I'm going to uh, take this. This is all ready, as you can see. It's a nice color. It's uh, just lightly flavored with a bit of chili. Oh, we, we lost the music. Hang on. There we go. <laughs> and we put it all in here. Oh, and then we're going to add. The cheese, just like that. And a little bit of uh, the Parmesan in. Why not a bit of mozzarella too? The two cheese salad with the olives. And then this is still cooking a little bit. But as it's all mixed together now, you can see it here. And I think it's about ready to go onto the plate. So. And then we have the flavored ciabatta. And here we have the basil and the chili as well. And a bon appetit. <laughs> and I've, I've been told I have to take a picture this time before I eat it. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna wait. <laughs> oh, oh, one last thing, ladies. One last thing, ladies. We could, uh, it's, a, it's a meatless what salad at the thing? moment. It's a meatless salad at the moment. So I could, add, I could add some meat or leave it like that. I'm gonna let you guys choose. I have the uh, Italian antipasti, antipasto which has uh, the Milano salami, the Napoli salami, and the Prosecuccio. Prosecuccio. For, for someone with an Italian accent, I should know how to pronounce that. <laughs> or I have the Art Italian sausage. Mm. What do you suggest? Honestly, the Prosecuccio. <laughs> okay. The Prosecuccio. Say it again. Prosecuccio. So you'll hear it pronounced both ways depending on what region you are in Italy as well. Okay. And I'll give you a little tip, Richard. By the way, that looks amazing. And I cannot wait for you to type the details of that recipe out so you can all have it. But a little trick that I will sometimes see the first go and you see me do a salami is they'll give us a glass and a frying pan and crisp it up a little bit. Then I'll pop that onto my pasta dish. And it's okay. just a, in a dry frying pan, just put the prosciutto or the piece of salami and crisp it up just a bit and then sprinkle it on your dish. Perfecto. 
Richard, thank you um, for. Uh, That's a matrasta. Hey, thank you. We all wanted to see your pictures. Oh, the pictures of which? Uh, your beautiful food. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I will take a picture today, and I'm not going to uh, eat it until I take the picture and send it off. Well, we really appreciate all of that, Richard. Thank you so much for tuning in with that great piece. We're excited to see what you're going to flare up for seafood week starting next week. I have a no idea. I don't even like seafood. I, I don't know. I it's a big. Good. So you're going to bring our non-seafood <laughs> dish. You're going to have a maple responsibility next week. Yeah, this okay. is it. No maple week this week. It's the first time ever. I think it's a no maple week. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I put maple. I put, well, not for you, but we we put some maple that went into the sauce for our, our pasta. Okay, so, good. And also the maple, the maple mustard chicken that you did last week, Michelle. Absolutely, the maple. So we got There's double maple. Chicken. Well, I could still add this. This is the maple mustard salad sauce. Oh, so there, could, there's you know. always a way where the David Briggs would be so proud from Briggs Maples. So I'm going to close off with um, my meatballs, which we have just got out of the pan. And we'll give a little look here. They look very beautiful. They seared up very nicely. Um, in here, look at that. We're going to get that yeah. nice crust on them. And they're a little bit bigger than a bite, albeit I probably could pop the whole thing in my mouth. Not going to lie. <laughs> there's the parental thing she <laughs> that happen so um they are what i want to say and of course they've just been cooled a bit so i can do this with my fingers when you break them open you see some nice fresh herbs in there mm. but what's really nice about them is they're really delicate too and they're and the other thing that was in there was those remember there was diced mushrooms and there was diced onions in it and the diced mushrooms put in fresh, I have to say, once they cook, give it this pillowy extra, you don't necessarily taste mushroom, but it adds a beautiful textural component. Can you have a taste? Sure. And they taste delicious. Wow. Mm -hmm. yum, yum. Really good. Not that I expected any different, but you know, you're not fully sure until you pop the meatball in your mouth. Um, I'll be one thing, when you're making a meatball recipe, if you're questioning your timing, I'm gonna give you a good tip. Cause I have a big bowl of meat, right? I'll take a little piece of it and I'll take a frying pan out and I'll just fry a little piece and taste it. So if I'm wondering, cause you don't wanna have a whole big raw pot of meat. So I just wanna give that same thing with a meatloaf or something when I'm cooking chicken, any any ground meats or anything. So it's a really great chef tip. So when you've got it all there and you're just wondering, did I put enough paprika? Did I put too much salt? I take a little piece, throw it in a frying pan and it's a great thing because you get to take a little taste test too along the way. So I just want to put that out there. I did taste test the base recipe of these before we cooked them this morning. But while we were cooking, I added the extra seasoning and we're going to have some good meatballs later today. So thank you all. Roz, is there any final words from your kitchen on your sauce before you leave yes. us? Shall I show it? Please. So let me just uh, get it to the point where you can see it. Can you, can you all see it? Or kind of. There you go. It's a little shadowy. Wow. So now what happens now is when I serve it, I put the noodles, once the noodles are, are cooked quite quickly, al dente, of course, thank you, Richard, for reminding me of that. Uh, and then I just put it in with the pasta sauce and I stir it up and then just saute it or medium, just to heat it up again and just get the flavor through the pasta. And then I top it with this and, you know, they say not to put Parmesan cheese on it, but Parmesan cheese goes on all pasta. Like I don't agree with that rule. So I put Parmesan on mine and I did one time in Montreal and the, the Italian chef was like, <gasps> but anyway, it still tastes delicious either way. So back to you, Michelle. Thank you, Roz. Well, listen for everybody from our kitchen to yours in Atlantic Canada, we cannot be more grateful for taking the time every week and, and to join us. We, we really enjoy hanging out with each other and it's always great to see our team. And, and Barry, hello from Vietnam. We've got Carrie, 
You are awesome. And I want to thank you twice. Lynn Colfer from our team at Cyber PR Army and her and hopefully Lavinia. We did a great job singing last night. And we're going to look forward to some more background tunes. Richard, love the background music. Putting the extra boogie in the staff. So um, we're going to have some lobster next week. I know this lady is super excited because it is one of her absolutely favorite things. But we're excited to be showcasing a lot of the brilliance of Atlantic Canada Hello. the next day. So Hello. I'm going to say thanks. And yeah. look at that. And um, bid everybody. A good week. A great week. Ciao, everybody. Arrivederci. 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 Goodbye. Have a good time.